<sighs> Hello everyone, this is Clay with Dungeons & Javas helping you stay up to level up. Today we thought we'd give you a quick overview of the Map Tool Virtual Tabletop software we'll be featuring in the store. It is just one of the things that will separate Dungeons & Javas from all the other gaming stores out there, and we're very excited to help our customers embrace the digital age of gaming. For the past seven years, we've been using this software in our homebrew games, and it has truly elevated our gaming experience. Let's dive right in, and I'll show you why. What you're seeing on the screen is a sample dungeon I threw together to feature at our booth at Con in 2019. The premise of this adventure is that the goblins have captured a girl from the nearby village, and the PCs have been hired to infiltrate the lair and rescue her. As you can see, we have four characters loaded into the map, and those familiar with the Pathfinder genre will recognize them as Valeros the Fighter, Kira the Cleric, Ezrin the Wizard, and Mauriciel the Elf Rogue. So if this was a traditional pen and paper map, the Dungeon Master might have already laid this map out in front of you on a hex map or on paper, whatever method you have. And you would be able to see either the entire map or what the pieces of the map that the Dungeon Master has drawn out for you. However, in Map Tool, you are looking at this entire dungeon because we are seeing this currently through the Dungeon Master's view. If we wanted to switch over to the player view, we can do that. And currently the way this is configured is the players can see everything on the map. But one of the cool features about Map Tool is that it has Fog of War built in. So if you're on the player view and we throw up the Fog of War setting, now suddenly you can only see what the characters can see. Another really cool feature of Map Tool is individual light sources per character token. So right now, if I have Valeros highlighted, you can only see in a five foot radius around him because I have given him a candle as a light source. But let's say the adventurer sparks up a torch. So to do that, I would just come in here to the menu and choose torch. And now it illuminates out to 30 feet and has a little bit of shadow beyond that. Now, if we click on Kira, she can only see from the light sources that Valeros has. So we need to give her her own light source. We'll give her a torch. We'll give Ezrin a torch. And we'll give Mauriciel a torch. So now, as I said, this is the player view. If I wanted to go back to the Dungeon Master's view, I could simply go up and do this. Now you're only seeing this toggling back and forth because I only have one monitor for the purposes of this video. However, in the store, the Dungeon Master is going to be able to always see everything that's going on on the map because he'll have his own individual view on the laptops that are available for the Dungeon Masters to check out. The players will only be able to see what their characters can see because they'll be signed on as the player view. Another really great feature about Map Tool is that individual tokens all have their own individual vision. So if Valeros takes a step up here, he can obviously see his line of sight all the way down to this end of the corridor. However, if we click on Kira, and it's that character's turn, she can only see what vision has been revealed to her. So now it takes on a whole new dynamic of keeping players honest to only be able to see and react to what their characters can see. Another really awesome aspect of Map Tool is that Characters have their own individual vision based on what race they have. So if I go in here to Valeros and look at his config, he has normal vision because he is a human. However, if I go into Mauriciel's token, because she is an elf, she has low light vision. And what this means is that she's going to be able to see twice as far as the humans in the party. Right now it's not really featured, but when we get to a bigger room on the map, you'll definitely see what a huge difference this makes. All right, so in this particular case, the dungeon has a statue here set up in the front. And as a dungeon master, you can select the object, go into the properties of the object, 
and you can actually add a note in this particular case a riddle that the goblins have etched on the statue so if I'm the players and I see the statue here I click on it and I can reveal in the lower left hand corner what is written on it so as you can see the statue reads skin green good sight nothing left we unite if mean and must fight good path at right now this is simply what the goblins consider a clever riddle to indicate that if your skin is green you should go to the left because if you go to the right there is a trap door waiting here to trigger if adventurers enter the dungeon so we can see this trap door on the map because we are currently in the GM view so everything is revealed this trap door is a item on the hidden layer and only the GM view can see items on the hidden layer so if we move the Kira token down here and reveal her site if we switch over to the view as a player you can see she cannot see that trap door so if the players token moves over the trap door you as a GM can say hold up because you can see that they've just moved over the area of the trap and you can tell them to make their reflex save or give them the unfortunate news that they have plummeted to their death however evil you wanted to make it so in this particular case let's say that the players are clever and they have chosen to go to the left path and so they can move themselves down the path and as you can see as they move they are revealing the vision for themselves. Probably easier to say if we go to the player view. So the players are moving down the tunnel and they can see that there is a something blocking their vision here. As a DM, I can go into the particular object settings and if I want to, I can make that player visible. visible to players. So now if I go back to the player view, as you can see now that they identify that as a door that is there to be opened. Okay, so the players can move up, do their listen check at the door, um, check for traps, that sort of thing, whatever they want to do. But eventually when they open the door, as you can see, they can't see anything on the other side because of the built-in vision blocking in map tool. So as a GM, all you have to do is go in here and click on the object layer, move this door out of the way, refresh vision, and suddenly the players can see into the room. And waiting for them in there are three goblin warriors. Another great feature about Map Tool is there is, as you can see over here on the left, a initiative board that's built in. Now you don't always have to have this up. If you wanted to, you could unclick it. But for the purposes of this, the Dungeon Master, obviously the action of the players opening the door would say everyone roll for initiative. One of the advanced features of Map Tool is that you could set up each token with their Dexterity values, which give them their initiative, feats such as improved initiative, that sort of thing. And you could actually have Map Tool automatically sort the initiatives based on the die that they roll and pre populate everything in the initiative window. In this particular case, however, I don't have any of that set up. So I'm going to highlight all of the tokens and simply right click and add to initiative. Now, as you can see, all the tokens show up in the initiative window. And if I want to make it a little bit better, I can say not show tokens. Now it's just a list of names. As a DM now, I can say, OK, what's everybody's initiative roles? OK, Valeros, the fighter, got the highest initiative. The wizard is fortunately in the back. Maybe Mauricio, uh, one of the goblin warriors, outrolled her. So as you can see, you can just simply drag and drop the items in the initiative window to sort your initiative. When you're ready to start the combat, you just click on the next button, and as you can see, it puts a checkbox next to the person whose initiative is active. So that would be Valeros. 
Now Valeros, being a typical fighter, will charge right into the fray. So he is going to move forward 15. As you can see as I'm dragging the token, it automatically shows you the distance of how far that token has moved. And because this player is a savvy player, they know that the opponents start the battle flat-footed, and therefore he can move through the enemy without provoking an attack of opportunity. Another great thing about Map Tool is it does the diagonal movements correctly. Those of you that are used to gaming on a grid know that the first diagonal move is 5 feet, the second diagonal move is 10 feet, then back to 5, then 10, and so on. So as you can see, as I go diagonally here the first time, it goes from 15 to 20. And the second diagonal move that I will make goes from 20 to 30. If I were to go again 5 feet diagonal, it would go to 35 and then to 45. So it does automatically already have the correct movement built in. So let's say the Valeros player wants to move around to set up flank with another character. He can move in here and do his attack. Once the character is done, the DM simply clicks on next. So let's say it's Goblin Warrior 101's turn, and he's going to move up here and get flank with his buddy and attack Valeros. Once he's done with his action, we can move in, and now it's Mauricio's turn. Mauricio moves in and will come up here and get her sneak attack on the Goblin because she is a rogue and she is flanking the character. So I'm not going to step through all of the aspects of the dungeon, but let's say the players vanquish these three goblin warriors and they're ready to move on into the dungeon. All right, as we know from the GM view of this room, there is a secret door that leads to a room down here. One cool thing about map tool is because I have drawn this on the hidden layer the players can't see that and also because of the vision blocking that is in place they cannot see beyond this it just looks like a normal wall so if we go back to the player view we only see this and again if i want to i can come in here to this object and i can right click and make it visible to players. I should have done that probably in the beginning of the game, but I didn't. All right, so back to the player view for a second. Again, they cannot see what's either beyond the door or they cannot see this hidden passageway down here. But let's assume that the elf made their perception roll and they can see the hidden door there. So now all I have to do is go into the vision blocking tool and come down here and delete the vision blocking now the players can see that there is in fact an opening there the reason why you can't see the floor is when i set this up i actually made a mistake and drew the floor on the hidden layer so as we can see the player can now move in to the passage it automatically reveals the vision as they round the corner and when the fighter moves down here, they can probably presume that there's either a hidden door here, here, or here. So let's say the fighter does in fact find the hidden door. Well, once again, I just go into the vision blocking. If I want to be super accurate, I can zoom in, delete the blue line that is the vision blocking layer, and now the fighter can see into the next room. So I mentioned a little bit earlier about how cool it is that the individual tokens have their own individual vision based on their race. So if I go back in here to the player view, the fighter has just opened this secret door with his torch burning bright for all of the monsters in the room to see. Unwittingly, the fighter just opens this door and cannot see anything that is going on in the room. All he knows is that he is opened into a dark room. But we know as a GM that there are six goblin archers on the other side seeing this shining beacon of light suddenly come into the room and they can knock their arrows and fire. 
if the party would have sent the rogue in first instead of the fighter. So let's swap their places here. Go back to player view. We can see that because Mauriciel has low light vision, she can see twice as far as the fighter could and therefore can at least see for the goblins in the shadowy area. Now, be, again, because her torch is only a 30 foot torch that is illuminating brightly out to here. And then the rest of this area is a little bit darker and the creatures are in shadow. So once again, we're going to start a combat and we want to clear out the initiative window of the previous combat. So we will come in here and say, remove all. We can go into the DM view, highlight all of the relevant tokens, right click on them, add to initiative, sort our initiative as before, and again, start the combat. So again, I won't bore you with the details of stepping through a few rounds of the combat, but let's say for the sake of argument that the players all dispatch the goblins and they're ready to move forward. So they all make it across the bridge. Maybe they had to make a reflex save or risk falling into the chasm, something like that. But they move up to the door. Once again, as the GM, you can just move the door out of the way. And now the players can see that the passageway turns to the left. Now, once again, remind you that the players can only see what they can see on their map. So they move in. And I doubt they'd have the... Sometimes you have to re order the tokens because I doubt they'd have the wizard and the cleric on the f in the front, but for the ease of this demo, I'm just going to move them all in mass. And once again, they can see the door down here. If I set the door properties up correctly, have to be a GM to do that. Now, as we can see, waiting for the players behind the door is the Goblin King and two of his elite fighters. The player view, they just simply know that there is a door there, so they move up to the door. The GM can open the door. And suddenly you are again in a case where you are rolling for initiative. So the players move in fight the Goblin King, the elite warriors, hopefully rescue the village woman and restore peace to the village. So that is a quick overview of Map Tool. I hope you enjoyed this demo and can see a little bit of why we believe that using this software really does take your RPGs to the next level. Should be noted, however, that this is not simply only for RPGs. For instance, if you wanted to play Zombicide. You can have a Zombicide game already set up. As we all know, part of the aspect of Zombicide that takes the longest is setting up. So you can already have a Zombicide game already set up and ready to go so the players can just dive right in. You could have this set, you could just simply take off the Fog of War and reveal the entire map like you normally would in the game of Zombicide. Or you could actually have the Fog of War on and add a new dimension to the Zombicide game where you could only see what your characters could see. So if I click on Kirk here, move him out, now suddenly he can see that there's a spawn point up here and the... Um, passageway go or excuse me the street goes left and right down here um, see that better if I go to the player view all right move the guy down here he opens the door and reveals a bunch of zombies inside which as AGM we could simply take our group of zombies over there and easily populate each room with a walker token I want to thank everyone for joining me for this quick tutorial on MapTool. I hope you're excited to use this software as, as we are to demo it to you and help you bring your games into the digital age. Once again, this is Clay with Dungeons & Javas, helping you stay up to level up. Hope to see you soon.